Hello beautiful people, my name is Miranda Joy Ayim and I am a two-time Olympian with Team Canada exploring how we define success, how we perceive failure and all the uncomfortable feelings and emotions we experience in between. Today I'm coming to you guys from Edmonton, Alberta where we are with Team Canada here for our training camp. Uh, we are in our beautiful hotel where we stay at. That's why we have the wonderfully inspiring backdrop of a hotel room, which is not the greatest backdrop that I would personally choose, but we're gonna work with it because that is our current situation. I also have my Canada gear on because we are in full training camp mode. Uh, but today I wanted to share with you a book that I recently finished. Uh, I've been reading over the past few weeks. It's called The Courage to be Disliked by Ichiro Kishimi and Fumitaki Koga. I picked this up in the Toronto airport when I was waiting for a flight. And it's really interesting because it is a combination of both philosophy and psychology combined, which is amazing because it's two of my favorite subject matters to talk about. And it's basically an exploration of Adlerian psychology. So Alfred Adler was a contemporary of Sigmund Freud and Carl Jung. Um, admittedly, he was the lesser known of them, especially nowadays, but he's contributed quite a lot to our thought of psychology in, those, in that realm. He coined the term inferiority complex, among other things. So he's been quite influential at a lesser, like, subconscious level. Uh, and I have really enjoyed his, his thought because he differs from Jung and Freud in a quite significant way. Uh, in the most pointed way is probably the way they approach etiology. So etiology is the study of causation essentially and that's normally how we approach life or the way we frame situations I would say. So we usually say this happened in my past so in turn I am like this. I had this trauma or this bad experience in my past and so now I'm jaded and I will in turn act in this certain way. We can also do it positively. I had this positive experience, so now I act like this. It's almost as if it's out of our control. It's cause and effect. We, we're kind of helpless in the situation. Something happened, so it formed us in the way that we are. And that's the way a lot of what Freud's uh, psychology is based on going through childhood traumas and figuring out why things are the way they are and that is a very interesting and important part of self-exploration and self-reflection but the other piece that Adler explores is is uh, called teleology and it's delving into the purpose or the way that we explore and define uh, these situations. So instead of focusing on just the cause and effect, he's focusing on why we do things, why we have this effect. So the easiest um, explanation or example that I can give that they gave in the book was the example of flying into a rage. It's because you're kind of out of control in that situation. You have the cause, which could be someone spills a drink on you, and then you fly into a rage because that's the emotion that came up. It was out of your control. It was a knee-jerk response. Perhaps you even have a past of anger issues and that's completely out of your control. But set aside the past. Just think about that cause and effect in the, in the moment. Adler approaches that in the sense that it's not out of your control. You did that for a reason. Perhaps you flew into a rage because you wanted to show that person that you were angry and that they should be sorry and that they ultimately apologized to you. Or you became angry because you wanted to express yourself and get it off your chest. So you do, we do have a choice in that situation, but it's all, often very unconscious and unreflected upon. Sometimes it's just the result of how we've coped with things in the past. As a child or a young adult, these are just the way that we, we figured out how to move through the world and it's not always the most helpful uh, manner of doing things, but it is the way that we do things just because we haven't consciously reflected on that cause and effect thing or why we're doing something. It's just a, a default, let's say. 
Um, but when we focus on the teleological perspective and why we're doing things, it focuses us, focuses us on a certain sense of mindfulness, if you will, because it's focusing on the power that we have in the moment. Instead of reflecting on what has happened to us in the past, it's reflecting on the, the conscious choice that we have in the moment to control what is in the, our future. So if we reflect about people who are often the most inspiring people, it's people who are coming from really difficult, traumatic backgrounds where they didn't have control. But in the present moment, they made choices to give them a better future. Like often those people are the most positive people they are the most kick-ass people. It's because they've approached it from this perspective, yes, this happened, but what am I gonna do now? It's not, yes, this happened, so I'm like this. We do have control over this part of the, the action. We maybe don't have control about our past. We don't have control about the events and circumstances that happen in life. A lot of life is uncontrollable. What, but what is in our control is our reaction and how we can shift our perspective and continue on into our future in creating the type of life that we want. So that's why this book has been so interesting. And there's this passage that really encapsulates how Adler approaches this whole experience. He says, no experience is in itself a cause for our success or failure. We do not suffer from the shock of our experiences, the so-called trauma, but instead we make out of them whatever suits our purposes. We are not determined by our experiences, but the meaning we give them is self-determining. And that self-determining part is really interesting because it's almost like a self-fulfilling prophecy. What we are thinking in our, in our perspective and how we assign meaning to circumstances in our past and present is how we control our reaction and how we shape our entire life. It's an incredibly empowering perspective and that's what I, I like. Maybe I've approached things I like to have control and this is a way to have control of the moment, so that might be a negative perspective, but it is very empowering because a lot of life is a bit of a chaos, a little bit of out of control, but even if we have negative circumstances in our life, we can turn them into positive things. And I think that's an incredibly positive outlook on life and what can that hurt? So I would encourage you guys to check out this book. I really enjoyed it. The Courage to be Disliked if you are in a bookstore or a airport. Um, check that out and let me know what you guys think. I've had a very fun time uh, thinking and reflecting on the different themes in this book uh, and I'm sure you guys will enjoy it as well so check it out let me know what you guys think and in the meantime continue cultivating your best you